program. I know you've been seeing clips while we're preparing and um, about to come on air. We wanted you to see that we are here. We wanted you to know that we are going to come live so that you'll be preparing for us. Again, it's our program, The View, where by the Spirit of God we take answers, questions rather. And it's interactive. And I believe as I'm speaking already, there will be numbers on the screen. It's only a WhatsApp number. It's only a WhatsApp number. So wherever you are around the nations of the world, we want to interact with you. Remember, we're still celebrating four years of God's goodness. God's goodness to ATV. Uh, we tried to cut our cake on Sunday just to celebrate the blessings of God. It was awesome here. You know, rejoicing, even though I can't find my own cake. The partners ate up the cake and nobody remembered to give the president and the CEO a little bit of the cake. But I forgive them. That's what God said I should do. We forgive them. We want to hear from you. This is the view. This is the view. And again, we, we want to look at things that are beat your dreams. You know, whatever you've dreamt and you believe you don't have interpretation, no one is claiming to know all. But if God gives us interpretation to the dream, we will interpret if you're a pastor, especially if you're a pastor, and there are things that are bothering you, there are things you want to know, there are things that you don't understand in the ministry, we want to hear from you. And if you're a member of the church, there are things that are happening in your church that you don't understand it. You know, the injustice of, of, of pastoring, the injustice, I would say, of pastoring is, pastoring is not interactive. Pastoring is not interactive. Pastoring is just coming, boom, letting the people know the will of God. But I think it's still important sometimes to ask questions and say, ah, Pastor, you said this. I read this in the Bible. Could you explain it to me? So years ago, even before we started the view, the Lord asked me to have a question and session time in our church. And we've been doing this for over six, seven years where people have time to ask questions. And you know, my life is transparent. They ask questions, and the things they do not understand, they try to understand it. Again, that's why we've taken it to TV, mm -hmm. and we've called this The View. What we've done in the church and answered and helped a lot of people with their questions, we've brought it out to the TV so that people around the world can be partakers of this grace and the wisdom of God that comes from His Word. Again, my name is Dr. Ida Peterson. I'm the Senior Pastor of Christ Ambassador's Church. Come visit us anytime you are around or if you're going through difficulties and you need an answer. We want you to come to Christ Ambassador's Church and by the grace of God, you will encounter God. In the studio with me, I have a lady and a gentleman. Um, I have I.K. I.K. Uwa, you're welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, sir. Well, that you have to speak up so we can hear you. And again, we have Melissa uh, on the show. Melissa, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Sir. We just had an awesome service. I'm excited for Melissa. <laughs> Even my wife called me today and said, hey, tell Melissa we're happy for her. I mean, how was the service? How was the, the, the service with the um, Apostle Talena? It was power packed. Uh, um, I'm not saying it because I'm part of the church, but I'm saying it because it was. It was very different. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere itself, everything was just so electric. Yeah. So, and I received the word, so I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You were there, you came there yes, Monday uh, was, and uh, we had a wonderful time. It was electric, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, the apostle ministered with such power, mm -hmm. such precision. Uh, we were uh, discussing of a, it, it came, there are some things he mentioned that made you, you look at the same scripture you have read before, yes. but in a different dimension. It was great. For those people who were, who were able to watch it all the way, I'm sure they were also very blessed. Otherwise, I'll say everybody should watch out for the repeat. Or get the message as, as much as they can. It was an awesome time. Wonderful time. And again, a big thank you to my friend, uh, Apostle Talena, for spending this time with us and uh, impacting the body of Christ. Our conference is coming. We're going to be having our conference in October. It's going to be another power packed uh, uh, conference. The names of those that will be ministering will be released very soon. You know, and um, it's going to be power packed. I love men with power. You know, because that's what my ministry is all about when God asked me to go set captives free. My name is Faith from Johannesburg. I'm asking this question on behalf of my sister. She said she had a dream. In the dream, it was like she, she was at school. Then there came a heavy storm and couldn't stop. Everywhere was dark. The next thing, she saw herself in the house, but the storm was continuing. It was like it's the end of times. It was terrifying. 
She quickly went to her room to pray. Then after she saw, she saw six eagles. Later the eagles have passed. Then suddenly it was a brighter day, a beautiful day. The dream felt so real. That's what she said. Wow, what a, what a dream. Every time you go back, and I think it's a combination of the past and the present. Mm -hmm. It's a because she said she went back to her school. Most times it has to do what you carry over from the past to the present. Mm -hmm. What has not left you from the primary school. And sometimes you see the primary school and it goes. It means that there is an unsettled business, things that, that you didn't achieve or you were supposed to do years back. Mm -hmm. But because the dream brought it to the... Present. the present it means that the same issue she used to have mm -hmm. is still prevalent even in her present time mm -hmm. but thank goodness for the dream when she said she saw eagles and the eagles went did they die no the eagles um the eagles passed they just i think they went and it became brighter yeah. uh, it, 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 wonderful it just goes to show again you know that mm -hmm. maybe what she's been going through an answer has come the brightness shows that maybe all those things that bothered her had been deleted wow. and by the grace of god we believe that there will be good things happening for her in her future wow. amen. thank you so amen. much sir. Amen. Amen. let me go with this uh, man of god good afternoon this is pastor tabo from blonde 14 blue 14 yeah mm -hmm. my question is about my church people come and go what is the cause of this that's the first question he has two questions okay let me answer the first one okay um people always come and go in ministry people come and go what keeps them is what you feed them what keeps them is what you feed them if you give them grass the bible said they are sheep the sheep will come and eat grass sometimes you know god will send people to you that is why my sunday services are absolutely very important to me because there are stray sheep mm -hmm. that are looking for pasture he said he will lead me you know i said the lord is my shepherd i shall not want okay he will lead me beside still waters he will restore my soul mm -hmm. so every pastor that ex is experiencing people come in and people go you need to ask, sit down and ask yourself questions sometimes people do not come because of your preaching your preaching is important most times a lady sent me a message by the conference and said i brought my aunties and my sisters and you read the message and i said i'm very disappointed because you you have told us that those that come in front that come early will sit in front mm -hmm. he said but when i came i came early because i brought my family i wanted us to sit in front he said but there was this usher that refused me to sit in front the usher made sure that i and my family will start at the back but i said i'm here early now all of a sudden what and she wrote me this message yesterday all of a sudden everything that man preached in that service she did not receive because the enemy stepped in yeah. satan stepped in and satan could have used anybody you understand so so he said my even my aunties and my sisters were very disappointed mm. what has happened is technically if she's my daughter she might come back mm. but she would i would have lost her auntie her sister mm. her cousin her nephew mm. you, you get the picture yes. so this week we would have checked our record uh, we were a thousand two hundred and five the next week you find out that you're a thousand two hundred what has happened you've lost that five so ministry is never all about preaching it's never all about preaching the reason why people go to mall have you found out that most people that go to mall don't go, don't shop they love the environment mm. they love the ambience mm. you understand they feel uh, that they belong mm -hmm. when they go to the mall have you been to the airport before once you get to the airport there's this feeling about you <laughs> official top class yeah top class you're about to fly you understand you're about to fly the problem is not flying is transport mm. it's like entering a taxi you see an air hostess she's a top passenger we'll call him at least she's a, a, a waitress. conductor a waitress that's what she serves you tea and coffee the same thing anybody will serve you in a shop but what they have done is the plane they've upped the 
of the ante of the, the level the level that you feel resp you feel important when you walk in you understand and that's what i've been i, I need to my usher heads mm -hmm. when the man walks into this place he needs to feel important the first thing he must feel important the first next thing he must feel welcome you understand mm -hmm. so he sits feels important feels welcome and he sits down the next thing that it will influence him is the music before the after the music the preaching after the preaching the power mm -hmm. now these are sequences that most pastors don't understand so they depend on themselves mm -hmm. thinking it's them that will keep the people god brings them god does not keep them god brings them you keep them mm -hmm. i say it again pastor mm -hmm. god will not keep your members God brings them, you keep them. If that person comes in, hi, how are you? Wonderful today. You look beautiful. Wow. There's an addition in our ministry because you just stepped in. Enjoy the service. We will have a great service. The lady leading the south the choir. Her name is Comfort. You understand? It's Comfort that will be leading the choir today. She, she's our worship leader. Go and enjoy the beautiful voice that Comfort has. You have sent a message already. Why should the person enters the church? The person is looking forward to comfort singing. And the name of our pastor is Dr. Ida Peterson. Just be careful, just calm down. You'll see what God will do during the service. Don't be in a hurry to leave. Okay, sometimes we're a little bit long, but you will see the power of God. You don't know what you are doing. Mm. You have introduced the church. You have left. No people come. Please, please, don't sit down here. Please, where are you coming from? Hey, the, the, the pastor's working hard. Mm. You see, that's why I go crazy over my employees. That is why I'm, I'm, I'm reactive to them. Because people don't see me, they see them. Mm. So you understand? So most times, that's how churches are. You just walk into the church. A lady came the other day. She's been away from my church. She came in. She said, hey, I went to one church close to our place. Ah, everything is rough, scattered. The people are kept. The people are, Before they even... It's nine o'clock and they are trying to try the instrument. Whether the instrument is working, you have finished. I hope you're learning from me too. Very well, this is how you run ministry. Preaching is 10%. Preaching is 10%. Most people that come to church know what you are preaching. They just want to be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. If you have a revelation, that's you have to work on yourself because if God has called you, God will help you in the ministry. Amen. So I think that's a, a very instructive. Let me go to the next question for okay. the sake of time. Um, he said, um, can I come to you because I like this kind of anointing? Yes, it's attractive. It's attractive. The anointing is attractive and the anointing is transferable. The anointing is transferable. You have to have, like he has a desire. You must have a desire. You must have a desire. One of the greatest pastors for me in Nigeria is Reverend Umar Bai. Okay, from a young age, when I was playing football, I, st I kept crying to God. I said, give me the anointing of Umar Bai. Give me the anointing until I met Umar Bai. And Umar Bai prayed for me. When you, when you go to our wall, we have wall of uh, fame. Mm -hmm. okay. His pictures, that they don't know him. But his photo is on the wall there because of the honor, the respect I have for the grace he carries. Another person I respect is Benny Hinn and Katrin Kuma. Mm -hmm. Because I desire what they have. If you go to the wall of fame we have in the church, their pictures are there on the wall. You understand? And that's how you pull in the anointing that the man has. You desire what he has and other things that you need to do. Don't just come to visit him and say, give me. No, and you come with a seed. Because nothing pulls out the anointing of the man of God like a seed. I have done it over and over and over. If I see you, even if you're a child, and there is something you have, if you go to the Benihin ministry in Orlando, you'll see my name on his wall. He doesn't know me. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. There was a time he called for a thousand dollar seed. I sent my own. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, on the wall of our ministry, 
there will be names of a thousand dollar people i sent he doesn't know me said they acknowledge we've received a thousand dollar you are part of the names on the wall a thousand or three thousand names on the wall but i'm connecting to the grace he carries and it's important so talking about um, impartation, uh, I, I listened to a message recently, and um, I want to ask this question. Uh, it's about the man of God, Eli Elisha. Now, First Kings thirteen fourteen said something. It said Elisha fell sick and yeah. he died of the sickness. Yes. Then uh, in some later verse, I think verse twenty four, the Bible says um, his bones later, his bones resurrected a dead man. Now, I, when the man of God mentioned it, I sat down to think about it a bit. This dead man did not have feet. Elijah was long gone. For the flesh had peeled off, you know, all the way up, and then the dead man touched his bones, and he stood up alive. But Elijah fell sick and died. I don't know if... Yes, there will be so, something must kill a man. He will always go through a way. He will always go through a way. Now, most times, the anointing you carry is not for you. I say it again. The anointing you carry is not for you. The anointing you carry is not for you. The anointing you carry is for others. The singing you can sing, do you sing to yourself? You sing to people. So God anoints you for people. For you to be healed of sickness, you need to have faith for yourself. You see? So people think, automatically because i am anointed i'm immune no your anointing is for other people a doctor does not treat himself mm. you understand a doctor goes to somebody to treat himself i've fallen ill one once in a while you call a counselor hey, i'm not feeling good please pray for me sometimes i have fated it for myself mm. not because i'm anointed you understand? Not because I'm anointed and uh, uh, the anointing will take away sickness. No, once an affliction comes, I use my own faith now to fight for myself. Mm -hmm. So you see pastors that are making others rich and they're broke. Wow. You understand? Mm -hmm. You see members of your team, your workers, most times broke. You know why? They feel that the anointing I have, I have covers them. Anointing I have doesn't cover you. You have to look for your own way to connect to the anointing. Mm. You understand? So if others are coming to your pastor and bringing him a thousand rand, buying him shoe, buying him shirt, you think automatically you will get? You will not get. You understand? Yes. Because you have a soap in the house doesn't mean you will be clean. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. Because you have a soap in the house doesn't mean your shirt will be clean. You have to use the soap for your shirt to be clean. So, and most times when you see a conference like this that has come, your pastors, your workers, hardly so. Because they think they are working for God. People are laughing behind me here. <laughs> you understand? But people are coming from everywhere. The man says, give a thousand. Do you know what my wife did? Immediately after the service, my wife said, go to my account, transfer three thousand. to the." She wasn't here. Yes transfer three thousand the first day i said okay after the second service after the second day she called me again i had erased an offering transfer another three thousand for me you see the difference mm. she's the pastor's wife mm. but she's coming after something mm. while some people are within and they don't understand the value of where they are in mm. it's like you're in water soap is entering your eyes in the river and you use your saliva to try to wash your eyes you get the picture that is it's a problem so i say pastor if you're not careful you die of sickness without no no remedy you need to now key in to be able to receive for yourself amen, amen. didn't jesus didn't they kill jesus yeah? They did. Uh, he was resurrecting people. No? Yes. Because he said, I, I, I offered my life. If I don't offer it, nobody will take it. Not the same thing in the body. The same thing with the church workers, with the people. Most times the people that are closer to you don't receive. 
first they look at you, it's a pastor, I know him, I see him. You understand? And I was shouting at my daughter here. I said, when it was Father's Day, <laughs> you understand? Nobody from my pastors to my workers gave me a gift. Only one person, uh, Otis, later. Mm -hmm. For me, they did not recognize me. For me, they, they are not qualified for a father's blessing. They are just my staff. I know it's heavy what I said. <laughs> Question. Let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, greeting, greetings. Happy anniversary, ATV. So happy to join you. I can't miss this show for anything. Thank you. My name is Elifas. I am Namibian. I'm, in, I'm from Namibia. My question is, why did Jesus speak to people in parables every time he was teaching? He did not want them to understand or why perhaps. The reason why Jesus taught in parables in the olden days, elders and people of wisdom spoke in parables. And the reason why they spoke in parables was that the people, the, their, their nationalities could relate. Instead of coming plain and saying to, they, it was like a national thing that parables, like where in Ebo land, in Ebo land, every time they needed to send a message and when you say speak in parables you don't hold the person responsible for the word but i said because jesus was careful because all the jews knew was torah was the law of moses so if you came with another law instruction to make them feel like you are giving them another commandment you understand those tony those told you. So if you speak in parable, a sheep, a, a, this went to this to do this. And when he got there, they, they themselves knew, know what you are saying, but they cannot hold mm -hmm. Jesus responsible mm -hmm. for misleading them in the word of uh, him. Yes. You remember the time, the only time he came up and I said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. What happened? They went to... They wanted to stone him. He said, are you a vampire? What? You know we can't eat blood you know so he said okay but okay these people let me go with them with proverbs so that they cannot hold me responsible how did they kill him he knew he was the son of god he said i and my father are one finish see because they understood the mystery of sonship you understand? They understand that the DNA of the father is transferred directly to the son. And the son and the father are one by blood and by the DNA. So when you say, I and my father are one, they say, ah, are you telling us you're a direct descendant of God? That's blasphemy. Mm. That is the reason why they killed him. For the first time he came out to say, what did they say? He said he made himself himself equal as God, God crucified, God. blasphemy, blasphemy. Even the high priest tore his clothes. Mm -hmm. So he spoke in parables so that they would not hold him responsible for those words. Mm -hmm. uh, very true, sir. It reminds me of uh, Second Corinthians. Oh, I've had something like this earlier, but I wanted mm -hmm. it to be more clear. All things are passed all things have become new. And, but we, we begin to understand some mysteries, especially with uh, the deliverance ministry, the power ministry. There are things like evil foundations. Mm. There are things like restitution. So my question now is, I don't know, if, because many problems, we have this kind of discussion, some people are not clear about it. All things are passed away, all things are becoming new. But the issue of restitution, where it needs to be done, and where you still have to deal with poor Grace. foundation or bloodline issues, like you mentioned, how does it relate when we also talk all things are passed, all things are become new and born? We, we must understand scriptures when we read all things have passed away. He just said the old things meant the way we related to God before had passed away. It used to be by sheep, by killing cow, by killing now. All things have passed away. All things have become new. It is now by grace. 
it is now by grace it is through me that is the new way to the father that's just what he meant by that now when we talk about restitution the death of jesus christ is empowerment i say it again the death of jesus christ is empowerment that's what what it is we were powerless against sin we were powerless against the devil we were powerless against the forces of darkness the death and resurrection of jesus christ just empowered us you understand so when we talk of restitution there are things that will continue that are written there are the written ordinances that have been written against us but the bible says but he nailed it to his own cross the word is his he didn't say he nailed it to the cross no he nailed it to his cross which means his cross now has the ability to now deal with those handwritten ordinances he said by his cross you are empowered so in this new dispensation what we are doing we are using that empowerment to deal with the ordinances so you can be a christian and still suffer from those written ordinances until you use that empowerment it's still is written it's written did the bible say that shall not steal if stealing is still a you see but the power of say if i ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. i believe that he has forgiven me once you apply that power of forgiveness and the message of god that the stealing that i still i can still be a preacher i can still be holy i can still live right even though this has happened that salvation is empowerment formerly there was no empowerment once you sin the law will take its course and that's the difference um, I've got a question on Facebook from Kimberly Okocha. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Where is the person calling from Nigeria? Mm. I see Okocha. No, okay, sir, she, no, no sir, she's from here. It's very long. I, I am a viewer of ATV. I came across ATV in January 2017 while browsing through uh, free to air channels. Um, let's just say that from that time i haven't been able to keep watching other channels through the through this ministry i have seen my life change in, in an awesome and mighty way indeed i testify distance is not a barrier dr ida peter side is greatly used by god from january till now i see god at work in my life yet there's something i believe in keeping uh, 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 something yet um i see god at work in my life yet there's something i believe is keeping me from coming to Christ Ambassador's Church. I work and I have a car yet whenever we have we have to come there is some something will happen to ensure that we don't touch the ground of Christ Ambassador's Church. You see you see there is a clip that always plays on ATV of triggered altars. You see I am told I am sold for I am sold out for Jesus. I'm a prayer warrior yet whenever I tell myself this Sunday I'm going to Kempton Park my car will suddenly be short of fuel. I will not have money to refill the car. I will end up watching service on ATV. Yet I, yet I always told myself that distance is not a barrier. Indeed, I will tap into the anointing. I know that I, I know and that I know that me having come across ATV was an assignment from God. I know that the prayers I do here at home as, as directed by the man of God are yielding fruits or oh, they, oh, they wouldn't be this opposition. On last week's service with Apostle Joshua Talena tagged God Answered by Fire, a woman came from Namibia with her brother and I declare that I will be there soon, standing and testifying I am here. My question is, is this a triggered altar that is fighting me to make sure I don't yes, sit yes, yes, at yes, Christ yes. Ambassador's Church? Yes, 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 yes. Every time you want to go to church, church is church. Church mm -hmm. is the house of God. Mm -hmm. Church is a place of solution. You need to brace it. You need to decide. Mm -hmm. Satan does not have power over your will. Over your will. No. He does not have power over your will. I say it again. Satan does not have power over your will. Satan influences your will. He wants to influence your will. 
but God has given you power. It says, I put a set before you life and death. Choose because you have choice. One thing God cannot do for you is choose for you. No matter. For even if you want to get married, a young man comes with six pack dress smelling like uh, alpha. You understand? You can look at him and say, no. That is the grace, the power. Nobody can sleep with you except to say yes. If he tries it, it's rape. It's against the law. He can go to jail. So God has given, I hear people say, you know, you know the pressure. I say pressure. Nobody can pressurize you. You decide. Yes. So I think it's right. what she said, I've heard a lot of testimonies. Even deliver session, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. I say, I told you not to come. Not to come. I did this, I did that. Yes. Up, and then it's so you see, it's, it's in flood. You need to brace it. You need to brace it. Keep money aside. Tell yourself, if there's no petrol, I'll use the bus. No, you don't have to use a, your own car. Once Satan sees that you've used the bus, what can he do? He will stop the bus from coming? No, sir. No, be determined to come and come. There are a lot of people watching us. You want to come. You need to come. You know, distance, I agree, is not a barrier. There is nothing like the atmosphere. I was telling me that they watch the service on Sunday because they had to go to their own church. Mm. But being here on Monday, Very different. the difference is clear. You know our services are electric. Yeah. You know, even Bishop uh, I, I, Apostle Talina was telling me when he sat by me before he announced it, he said, no, it's different. Oh, this church is something. This, you know, he said, what we see on TV, he was telling me, what we see on TV is different from this, what, we, what is here. You understand? So please do come, um, Okocha, if that's your name. Kimberly. Yes. Kimberly Okocha. Because please. she goes on to say, um, her mother is a witch. Don't call your mother a witch. Okay. You don't want to define only the power of God can reveal that. Mm -hmm. That sometimes you say people are witches and uh, they might not be witches. Sometimes people are influenced to do some few things you don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Judas a witch? No. Mm -hmm. But the Bible, Bible says, but Satan entered him. That's true. He wasn't a witch. <laughs> that statement brings me some to what I'm trying to <laughs> comprehend. Sir. How is it possible? I never asked something like this before. But how is it possible that. Um, you know, uh, the Bible says our temple, our body is the temple of the living God. And mm. the Holy Spirit lives there in. And, uh, but we see influences. You've, thank God you've, you've portrayed the point a bit. How is it possible you see Christians, not only us pastors, see Christians being able to be influenced? Almost like the compartment of their life where Satan dwells. Yeah, because the, 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 the issue is that the word of God is there. And the word of the devil is there. To him whom you obey, to him you are a slave. Remember before this time, Judas had gone to see those people yes. and told them, I can bring this Jesus to you. Remember? Yes. Prayer yes. to this time. Yes. So he had opened up a door. You understand? He had opened up a door. And in opening up that door, boom, Satan has entered. And Satan looked for him. In that meeting, somebody will betray me. Somebody will betray me. Satan said, don't mind him. They will not catch you. Don't mind him. They will not do. Just leave. Leave before this man begins to accuse you. Before this people begin to talk and you change your mind. The Bible says he got up. Yeah. You understand? In that period where he was hearing that voice, you sit down. You see, words are powerful. You understand? Only you, you sit at home. I have a PA. I might tell him <laughs> a PA is even here. Go here, go here. You go to the home. All that I told him that day will begin to play in his head. If he's wise, he knows Satan is trying to influence me. Satan is trying to do this to me. And that's the difference between a son. I said a son and a bastard. Once a father corrects you, it's not about you. Take the correction and move on. Mm. But some people don't handle correction. Some people are, 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 are once you correct them, they decide, uh, okay, let me leave. Let me go. You understand? He doesn't like me. I think I'm not useful. You have, you have listened to the voice of the devil. You understand? Philippians 4, I think it's Philippians, uh, is it 4 also? He says, whatsoever things are good. Philippians 3, whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things of good report. Think on these things. You need to keep thinking, thinking right. Thinking right. I'm walking here and I look at Ike. 
I said, this IK does not respect me anymore. This IK does not respect him. Look at, I just walked in, and as I walked in, IK just said, good morning. What was he supposed to say? Good morning, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for having me here, sir. You are, I, I love you, sir. Okay, that will massage my ego. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Satan will just send a message. Did you see this? Did you see how you are spoken to? Did you see they don't respect you? They don't value you? If they don't value you, you have to leave. If they don't value you, if they don't honor you, look for where they will honor you. You understand? You don't feel important. You are no, they are not important. Once you get there, Satan will come in. And nothing will stop him. Because the word of God is what confronts him. Mm. You understand? Mm. The word of God is what confronts him. As the word of God comes, you use the word of God, Jesus said, it is written. Mm. It is written. It is written. And there are answers to the word. So, I always say, when people fall victim of the lies of the devil, it's because they don't know the Bible. They don't have something to fight back. You understand? Very true, sir. sir questions are coming in, but it's, it's not just came to my mind. I, 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 let me just ask. Sir, I think uh, Apostle Talani mentioned this on Sunday. You, you see it in the Islamic world. Mm. They are ready to do things. They spend their money for what they believe for their cause, whether it's the terrorism aspect or to further Islam. But what you just mentioned, in, 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 it's, not just, it's, it's almost everywhere as far as I can see it. Yeah. You see the Christians are battling with these things. They second guess the man of God, they second guess instructions, even from the usher, like they, they express with it. I don't know, is there a way, is there something that can be done? Is it more prayer? Is it the prayer for revival? Is it a lack of revival? It know. is a decision. When I got saved, I told myself, I'm a footballer, I had fame. You know, but because you had fame, I had pride. Because I had pride, the women were coming, I was playing football. And I told myself, this Christianity I'm entering, two things will destroy me. This woman and pride. And I went to scriptures. And anger used to be anger. If you're angry, you're proud. Anger is the mother of pride. Because ego, your ego, that's what chased the devil from heaven. That ego. You understand? Any man that is angry, is, you're angry because they've touched your, your pride. Angry people are proud people. You understand? Amen. So I told myself, I need to deal with two things in my life. Pride and the women issue. Because I was playing football. I'm married. I wasn't married then. So I took a vow. The vow I took that I would never defile myself with any woman. I said, God, put a curse on my life. I took a decision. And I've been faithful before God and man in my marriage. I said pride. Then the Lord started teaching me pride. Teaching me anger. Teaching me anger. He says anger lies in the bosom of a fool. And a fool dies before his time. So a proud man will die. It does not naturally mean natural death. You will die. You will, be, you will just be useless. You will miss out from the will of God. Because that's what death is. Death, Adam missed out from the will of God. So the Bible says Adam died. So you will die and miss out from the will of God. I told myself, I need to humble myself not to miss out from the will of God. So you see, but because I had the word of God. But because people don't read the word of God, they read Twitter. They read Facebook. They send messages. I saw one guy send me a message today on Twitter. He's not a believer. He's not saved. Well, I know him. But the way he showed say touch here the bible will open for god so loved the world that he that's what he sent to me i said don't you read this bible you're sending to me is it because you are sending facebook twitter message it has become a norm now yes. that people send things and they don't even know they copy and paste you don't it's not from your heart mm -hmm. you read it oh it's interesting you forward that's true. you read it's interesting you forward but the man that wrote the thing had something from his spirit and his intention is for you to get that same thing from your spirit. But people don't. Okay. Questions are coming in. We have this um, good afternoon and happy anniversary ATV. Thank you. My name is Moyiwa from Pretoria. My question is, what is your take, man of God, on prophets or men of God who show, who show off their extravagant lifestyles and spend 
half their prophecies talking about money and the miracle money and money this and money that. I know you are rich, but we don't see you telling the cameraman to zoom in on your shoes. What is your <laughs> Thank you and God bless. Please, cameraman, zoom in on my shoes. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Way. Don't do that. He wants to even do that. No, no, no. Uh, wealth is temporary. Wealth is temporary. Heaven is eternal. You know, heaven is eternal. In heaven, there will be gold. There will be silver. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Everything we desire on earth will be in heaven. If God blesses you, thank God. It's the blessings of God. The Bible says riches are deceitful. I have already read that today in, in Psalms 119. It talked about riches. That riches are deceitful. The, the, you, your riches sometimes bring pride. But we enjoy the blessings of God. Once the blessing comes, it is our right. We enjoy it. You understand? But there are people out there that don't have it. There are people. My job is to teach them. Tell them what I do. You understand? Tell them what I do. How by the grace of God, I've gotten to where I do. Just like uh, Gideon would say. He said, look on me. You understand? Say, look on me. Do as I do. And those people, were, uh, uh, those military men that went with him, conquered nations with just 300 people. So I, I think yes you, sometimes you testify of the blessings which i do sometimes i testify of the blessings of god you understand i do testify you know if god blesses me i testify but testifying and showing off are two different things showing off is pride and arrogance mm -hmm. testifying brings glory to god so what do i advise them let the holy spirit convict them so I, I've had this, uh, this conversation and someone said um, that sometimes when he enjoys or he, he, that is what they enjoy when men of God because he, he stimulates because in mm. Africa, especially Africa, you see these things are less in European countries yes. because everybody is well to do. Nobody is, but in Africa, the majority of the congregation are looking for 10 rand, 20 rand as it were. So somebody said these things are to encourage, to show the other side, like paint a picture, show a vision. I don't know how, if it relates to... Sometimes it depends. It depends. It depends. It's motivational. You tell people, God can bless you. God has blessed me. Oh, God just gave me a, a Range Rover. You understand? But I can't carry the picture and I carry the whole thing. <laughs> As I'm saying, God gave me. I say, put the camera down, Range Rover. <laughs> put the message there. I've already told you God has blessed me. It's enough testimony for me. You understand? And in this season where there are kidnappers and evil everywhere, I don't want to people to see my car and the number of my car that I drive. You know, but when God blesses you, nothing wrong in telling people. Like my daughter on Sunday, she was so excited. You know, I God bless me with the car. Nothing wrong, but she's not showing up. She's testifying. You understand? She's, and people need to know that the blessings of God, he said, make it rich and it brings no sorrow. Riches is of God. It is of God. Satan is full of poverty. You know, he wants us to be poor. That's why he kills and steals and destroys. Sir, I just have a question. I don't know if it's going to sound right. Um, sometimes people are so used. The Bible says that um, we must renew the mi our minds. And isn't it that sometimes you find somebody has been in poverty for a very long time. Now, if somebody is on the altar, I have witness I like somebody talks about you know the Lord blessed me sometimes people get offended because they are they've been in that spirit of they've been operating under the spirit of poverty for so long now isn't it that that spirit is kind of counter-attacking what is on in the yes, person yes the, the, the reason and if you come to church people are testifying mm -hmm. and you're feeling somehow you, you're in trouble mm -hmm. Satan has you bound you know, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life mm -hmm. and have it in abundance. You know, the life of blessings, the life of wealth, the life of health, the life of peace mm -hmm. have come that they should enjoy. There's, if, you're, if you're happy, there's nothing as nice as being joyful and happy. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it settles problems, trust me. So if you come to a church like this and you hear people testify, you should key in. Mm -hmm. If you don't key in, you lose out. If you complain, you lose out then why are you here oh, all they talk about is the blessing don't you seriously don't you need it mm -hmm. i went to see a doctor I, I, I shared it in the church i went to see a doctor so he came out and saw the car was driving he said he followed me 
purposely to come and see what I'm driving purposely I said yeah he said yeah you're on TV you're a star so I want to see what this star I said Africa it's a problem then he came out he said oh it's a nice car I said thank you God bless you then he said you know I went for a meeting and a young man a very rich young man said something I said what did he say he said the car you are driving are you driving it out of necessity or is what you want <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> strong words hmm. are you driving because you are managing you is it really what you would want to drive and I think that's where we need to strive the clothes I'm wearing am I wearing them because I want to wear them or am I wearing them because that's all I need to wear and you ask God to change your level you understand in humility if I want to wear anything I will wear if I decide to wear I will wear you, you understand and that's I believe is the part of the blessing the blessing is not the clothes the blessing is not the car you drive the blessing is the divine ability deposited in you the divine ability it says so uh, 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 in the trauma for it is God that given the power to make so the power must be there before you make you understand healing is not on its own deliverance is not on its own so people talk about deliverance people talk about healing people talk about prophecy it matters nothing what brings about prophecy brings about healing brings about the miracle is the power of God inside of me now that is the reason why these demonic pastors are going to look for power to prophesy to do this so it is what is inside of you that gives you the grace to do what you do so for a poor person a person that is broke a person that thinks are not right what you need to do is not look for the money it's not look for the car look for what triggers the blessing you just have a divine idea mm. go 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 and make designers pancakes mm. make pancakes pancakes go and make those pancakes mm. you are not you now have the ability the mm. power then you see your pancake will increase so many times ministries are not going why the power is not there mm. it is the power that brings about growth it's important Amen. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's powerful because I just the, way was, the, the story of Joseph just flashed through my mind. Exactly. It was in his father's house, but he was comfortable. Yes. He threw him into uh, slavery. He rose up to so become head. Became head. head. So he was comfortable. They put him in prison. He rose up and was in charge of the prison. Actually, they moved him to palace. It is the the, the Potiphar's husband said, "I I see that this my thing is progressing because of you. Mm. Just his mm. his presence there." Changes everything. It's presence there, change. I've said it. Take me to Kuguletu. Take me to 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 Dubai. Our great church. Mm -hmm. You know, sir. It's me that is growing the church now. If you hear Bill Gates, Bill Gates is Microsoft, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is Microsoft? It's nothing. Bill Gates is Microsoft. <laughs> you understand it is not microsoft is not what is progressing apple phone is not what is progress it's still jobs you understand it is jobs it's jobs that makes micro you understand this earth we have the reason why it's standing still is the papa himself god is in charge you understand because god is in charge that's why we see what we see you cannot miss it so people are looking for power hey god give me a car no 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 you are missing it you are missing it you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. yes marriage on its own is not a problem what makes marriage what makes a good marriage love trust commitment. they're going too far all these things are <laughs> extras what makes a good marriage is the man and the woman oh, man. Okay. So if your marriage has a problem, the problem is not the marriage. The problem is you. Deal with you. The man deals with him. Perfect marriage. I have the most perfect marriage in the universe. Me. 
So it's not because of the things happening. So people divorce. He's not giving me food. He's not he's doing not doing this for me. He did he doesn't buy me clothes. You you are in a wrong you are, you are in a wrong you are in a wrong place. That's why you don't look for a man with a big car with a big house. That's not marriage. What if conditions happen? Yeah. It's the man that is the issue. It's the man. It's man. Jesus said, if you destroy this body in three days, I will raise it. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are going to take it. We are going to take a break. And I think I'm having fun. I love the Bible. I love, love the Bible. Uh, the questions are, when we come in for after the break, we're just going to shoot and begin to read all your your questions please don't touch that guy see you just now ATV bringing God's power to the nation Get the new book written by Dr. Ida Pedersai, The Sent One, titled Divine Encounter with the Supernatural. This book is the roadmap to Dr. Ida's calling to ministry. To order your own copy, please call plus 27 -6 -6 New release by Dr. Amy Peterside. Will I ever get married? Are you struggling in the area of relationships and trying to find the right partner? Well, this book will teach you how to get married and stay married. Know the signs of a right partner. This book includes topics like define a relationship, becoming a person of worth, how do I know he or she is the one, internet dating, where can I find love? To order yourself a copy of this book, please visit our bookshop or call plus 27796756088. Well, well, welcome back to The View. We've been trying to expound and um, discuss some few questions that have come in. And again, I want you to be patient with me. Some of you that have written to, to me, I, I'm a teacher. So because I'm a teacher, I, I want to break it down and make sure that everything that you have asked me is well answered. Because one question for one person is answer to all. One answer to one is answer to all. Amen? So please be patient with me in the studio again. I still have, this is the view. I still have Melissa and I have IK. Again, uh, for those of you that are in Nigeria, for those of you that are in Nigeria, I will be coming to Port Harcourt. I'll be preaching in Port Harcourt on the 30th and on the 31st at the Jesus Evangelical Mission in Ozoba, very close to the airport, you know, by NTA Road. Don't forget, if you're watching ATV, you will see a number on the screen. I want you to call so that they can show you where the place. Don't just come because you're in Port Harcourt. Come from Oweri, from Calabar, from Enugu. It's going to be power packed. Deliverance from the house of bondage. It is raw power. We are not coming to speak English. We are coming to demonstrate the power of God. And I will see you in Portugal. Please just call those numbers on the screen for directions and times. Amen. Please, we need to take the questions. Um, I have this a thank you from Sibongi Le Kubuse Kumalo. Thank you so much, Papa. I now understand when reading the Bible. Just a thank you, sir. Wow, beautiful. You need to understand the Bible. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for that uh, 
response. Yeah, this is, of, is also a thank you from Pastor Chidi from Togo. Pastor Chidi from Togo. He says, Man of God, sir, I just want to thank you and congratulate you and the ATV team for your love, your sincerity to the gospel. Amen. And all those pastors from everywhere, we want to come. We want to come. But I can come on my own. I can come on my own. Pastors, we want to travel around the world. The Lord has released me to go around the universe, around the whole world to preach. So whether you're in Bene, whether you're in Togo, whether you're in Ivory Coast, I have a, pre a friend there in, uh, in Ivory Coast, uh, DRC Congo, any part of Africa or beyond, we are ready. Just write a letter, send a letter to our offices, and we will respond by the grace of God. As God gives us release, we will come. I was in Namibia the last time, uh, was in um, Botswana, was in uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Um, we, we, we want to come around and show God's power around. There. I think I should be coming to Namibia sometime in December by the grace of God. Um, wherever the Lord leads us, we will go. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have this one. Um, thanks for the answers, man of God. I have another question. <laughs> that question. I have another question. It says, what can someone who impregnated a girl in a church okay, maybe meant when someone impregnated a girl in a church but they break up due to their differences and he goes to let their pastor knows about know about it is it okay for the brother to propose to another person in the same church for a courtship you see the girls must close your legs close your leg uh, uh, Pregnancy is not marriage. Pregnancy is intercourse. You had intercourse, you enjoyed it, she enjoyed it, the consequences is the baby. He is not obliged to marry you because that baby came out of that baby came out of uh, sin per se. That is not a covenant. Covenant is marriage. So the young man is free. But the problem is if the young man goes and impregnates another girl or goes to sleep, the young man must be called and be warned. You can't be sleeping with the ladies in the church. He has to be warned. You understand? And when you say you want to date a girl, let the church know. You must let the church know. If I've told my sons and my daughters, if you're dating somebody, tell me who is dating you. If we have a dossier, a story about the person, me, I will tell you. I will say, you are number seven that this man has come to tell me. If he didn't like number one, number two, number six, what are the possibilities? Mm -hmm. Now, close your leg, make it difficult for him. You understand? This is why we are pastors. This is why we need to lead the ship. So if a young man wants to move on, he's not under any obligation to marry anybody. But he has to take his child, take care of the child, because that's his child. But the girl can't even come and complain. Uh, this young man, I have a baby for him. So what? Are you the first to have a baby? You slept with him. You, you committed sin by sleeping with him. The Bible says we should abstain mm. from every youthful lust. You have to keep yourself pure and holy. Amen. Amen. Mm. Um, this one is from Muya. Um, he, you answered his question earlier, sir, from Pretoria about the showing on the camera zooming in on the shoes okay you're saying thank you for comprehensively answering my question sir thank you thank you mm. yeah we have this one um my name is pastor Perkins from zimbabwe question is is there anything called the trinity i mean the father the son the holy ghost or is it only jesus and the holy ghost that are existing but God no longer exists. Pastor Perkins from Zimbabwe. Ah, the pastor can't ask that question. The pastor can't ask that kind of question. He says, I'm God of all flesh. Without me, you can do nothing. God is supreme. There is God, there is the Holy Spirit, and there is Jesus. I explain it like this. It is the phone. This phone is God. Okay? The, the, not the, the, the sin mm -hmm. is the Christ. This, well, when I say the sin, the sin is the Christ. The phone 
the sin is the Christ the sound the wave that you that comes in for me to be able to talk so it needs the airwave the sound which is the Holy Ghost you need the sin which is hidden in Christ which is hidden in God and you have God so the three of them are here but the boss is the phone which is God it, it is like the sun if you see the sun the big moon the, like let's say okay the moon let's use them or the sun the sun the ray of light mm -hmm. and the heat you feel mm -hmm. the heat is the holy spirit what brings about the heat is that ray of light is jesus jesus is the light mm -hmm. then the sun is god they are three in one they cannot be separated god is alive hallelujah Amen. god's not dead he's alive god's not dead he's alive god's not dead he's alive i can feel him all around me amen <laughs> amen so, so may i have a question i i noticed a lot of young people they get married some of them like you're talking earlier concerning they get pregnant and then some some guys they marry the girl then they end up not being happy in the marriage what should they do no no because the the the, the marriage was based on lust Yes, you love the girl has a big t her bum, her thighs are thin, she's slim, she's tall. The man, men are moved by attraction. Mm -hmm. But the woman must complement it, must prove that I'm not only body, mm -hmm. I have content. And convince the man not to come after the content. You find out. Have you not found that the most good-looking men marry ugly girls? Mm. Mm. Eh? What is the thing? You know why? Maybe the personality. By the first attraction, they reject the girls. Always. Mm. But the girl is smart. The ugly ones know for this I say are ugly because some are fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> some are wonderfully made, some are fearfully made. The attraction most times for the man he comes close he's looking for beauty so he says i don't have interest in this girl there's nothing mm -hmm. but the girl comes close and he has a tall slim beautiful thing whatever he says or one small somebody he loves there and all of a sudden the slim the one that is all fashion does not cook for him does not greet him does not show respect but this one that is simple and normal how are you are you okay ah, he, he begins to note you understand he begins to know that there's something different about this girl that is not here and that is the spirit the character that is the main person the real person is what is inside before you know it, what is outside goes and he begins to look for what is inside their marriage will last very long because it is not from the outward appearance and that's the beauty of god so god does not look at the outward appearance he says he looks inside so for you to be happy in marriage it is not the shape of the person it is not the grammar of the person it's not the whether the person dyed his hair pink yellow blue which is what why hollywood does not work Hollywood does not work because they marry out of the physical yeah. influence. Once you've been with the person, you've taken everything that is physical. You say, this is not what I can take to my mother. Along the line, she has had two kids. This is not hey, mama. If mama sees this one, mama will not be happy with this one. You understand? But you could have made a mistake and you're wonderful. So somebody used you. You, you get a child or you have two children. But you're a sweet person. Even with those two kids, people will still marry you maybe you made a mistake or you made a wrong man that just left you you understand you made a mistake but you're a good person you will still attract very good people yeah. so on, still on this marriage let me just ask this very popular um, question i'm saying this for the sake of because i saw the discourse in somewhere so i said let me ask it since we are we're talking about marriage there's this popular thing where believers now 
pray to God and then in a dream God shows him or her usually it's always the him that this is your wife or he sees whatever happens you know different kind of I've never seen one but I've had people say this is the vision I had this person now the question is when they do go to you know inform the lady some of them get harshly rejected and so they come back to the pastors they come back to the circle like what happened? Should I move on? Should I pray again? Should I keep praying? But according to them, they realize, holding him or her, that they saw it in a dream and they are very certain that. You see, people play God. People play God. I've always told my story. If you read my book about my own wife, you understand? After I saw my wife, I was driving and the Lord said, Go and pray. I went down and I started praying. The Lord said, Marry her, for she's your wife. I came back to her. She had a, a youth meeting. She was secretary of her youth group or so. So I came back and uh, we started talking. I did not tell her God said. I did not say God told me nothing. God told me God didn't tell her. You understand? My job is to convince her not using God. No. Forget God. It is a secret God showed to me. Okay, so God said, I've given you the green light. Go after the green light. Don't come, my sister. You're my wife. I saw you in the vision. <laughs> Me, I will say, I've not seen the vision. <laughs> because I need to see the vision too. You understand what I'm saying? God cannot just abandon me and speak to you and leave me alone. You understand? So what will happen is, and when God has spoken to you, you begin to now rearrange your life. Mm. Even when you're approaching the girl, God has said, we'll marry this girl. Why do I put pressure on her to sleep with her? Why do I put pressure on her to defile her? If she will be my wife later, no stress. You behave, you behave like a gentleman. Can we have lunch? Can we have dinner? You carry yourself. You show her respect. Because already you know, God has already told you, this woman is my wife. Then she needs to be treated with honor and respect. Not to be defiled and to be messed up. Because you will still marry her. You understand? When I first proposed to my wife, she said, okay. Let me pray about it. You understand? She firstly went to report me to her pastor. A young man came to see me. I hear he said, Pastor, what is his story? I need to... You see, because there's no longer order. That's why the teaching ministry is important. People are running to power. Power where their lives are messed up. Prophesy! 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 Okay, they prophesy to Melissa. So one Alhaji. Alhaji walks in there. You know Alhaji? Alhaji is the Muslim. The Muslim Alhaji. <laughs> he comes with the uh, X5. You understand? X5. Is that X5? Yes, sir, there is. He comes with an X5, smelling like heaven. And walks in. How oh, lovely lady. Okay, Melissa is looking. They say the man will appear in three months. <laughs> hey, Jesus. No need to, no need to pray. <laughs> it, it, it has it's been, it is spoke it is written it has been spoken <coughs> the other side they say maybe he will change change where that you're marrying is like already against the word of god mm. but people don't look at things like this i want to say no 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 we are not equally yoked mm. we're not, i'm a believer uh, I, I will change you will change go and change and come back let me know you see so this thing needs to be done properly we need to know the word of god and once you will know the mind and the word of god if god speaks to you in a dream he's giving you an information you understand give you an information you remember the story of um, joseph and mary he said she's your wife don't put her away did you see where joseph came to mary and said god showed you me in the dream that the baby you have is of god i should not put you away did he say that? No. He just did his thing. Mm. He said, okay, this woman will get into trouble for this pregnancy yeah. because this pregnancy is not mine. What do I do? I have an information from heaven that the baby belongs to God and I should marry this girl. He went and paid Lobola. Mm. Immediately. Paid Lobola so that the girl, before the pregnancy starts to show, mm. he has taken in the girl and covered her up. Covered her up. Nobody knew that the baby wasn't until when Jesus died, though, what well, this thing we are reading, don't think people knew, because they said they were saying your brothers and your sisters are with us. 
So people didn't even know how Jesus came. Ah, no, we only know him by the Holy Spirit. Mm. Through the stories. You know, the Bible wasn't written by that time. It was the disciples that knew, mm. that knew the story. And they were not writing because Jesus said, don't say these things until I'm gone. So if you have a dream, keep the dream and walk. Calm down. <laughs> uh, the yeah. Okay, please, another one. Um, this is from Anonymous. A lady said to me she had a dream where I was giving her plate. I don't take Anonymous. Uh, I've told you if you, want to, if you want to write me, you put your name. The Anonymous is not, it's not a human being. I'm not in a secret service. I'm a man of God. I'm a pastor. The Bible says his name shall be called they call the name, not anonymous. I'm sorry. Just write your name or else I will not answer any anonymous. Thank you. Um, this is from Zimbabwe, sir. How are you, Bishop Ida and all ATV staff? You're doing a great job. Thank you. I was really blessed to see you Monday service with Apostle Joshua. I'm Arnold from Zimbabwe. My question is, how does one get that power to make wealth? Is it by fasting, sowing seeds, or praying to have that ability? Wonderful question. Absolutely wonder how does one get the power to make wealth mm. there are scriptures the bible talks about seed sowing mm -hmm. you not just seed sowing you need to seek the face of god mm -hmm. you there's nothing wrong in asking i i talked to so to last wednesday mm -hmm. about you have not asked you have to ask god and god will listen to what you're asking him mm -hmm. why do you need the money do you need it to live a lavish life? Mm -hmm. God wants you to be a blessing to his kingdom. Mm -hmm. God wants you to take care of your family. God wants you to take care of the less privileged. Is God blessed? What reason is God blessing you? So when you table before God, ask him. Mm -hmm. Come before God and ask him. You understand? I need to be blessed. I need the blessings. You promised me in your word. If you bless me, I will do this. I will be a blessing. I told you last two weeks, um, where's this rich man in America? Warren Buffett. Okay. He just gave 3.10, 3.8 billion. Did you read it? Yeah, Two weeks ago, he just to charity, to yeah. fight polio, to fight it. 3.8 billion dollars. He didn't say this is for my children or for my, and it's 80 something, so he's, he's going to expire soon. Amen? He's yeah. going to expire. Yeah, what are you, all of us will expire. That's the more you go, you're expiring but he's trying to touch humanity and that's the essence of blessing do you know why you need money is it to buy lavish cars and eat live an opulent life yes you must take care of yourself but the first case god make me wealthy for your kingdom's sake mm. that i might be a blessing to others mm. and once you begin to pray right and god sees your heart he will open and he will test you are you faithful don't be looking for there are people like uh, uh, Talina was saying, you understand? John, you will convince two years, you are still convincing them to pay tithes. Two years. They will tell you it's the Old Testament. But when you bring oil, they'll put your head for you to be anointed. Is the oil not Old Testament? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll tell you. No, we, the word of God, even if it is one line, whether it's old, new, reverse version standard version is the word of god Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um maria her name is maria sir a lady said um a lady said to me she had a dream where Did I was she just put her name now yes sir. wonderful <laughs> maria a lady said to me she had a dream where i was giving her plate and she asked me what does that mean please help man of god with the meaning plate mm -hmm. plate represents service I don't know what you do, Maria. I don't know whether you are a waiter or whether you do or whether you serve or what you are, what you are doing. But when you see plate, mm -hmm. plate re it represents the servant life. Okay. You understand? Servant life, may, maybe not made mm -hmm. service. You are called to serve. That's why you, when you mm -hmm. see a plate. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask this question that a friend of mine asked. Uh, Faith, I think is her name. She said, uh, it's a question about spiritual warfare. Uh, I put it on my phone for a while. It says, uh, how do you know you have won battle? Result. Result. Just result. Spoil, spoil, yes. Result. 
If you're praying, I need a husband. I need a husband. If a husband come, have you not won the battle? Mm. Uh, result is the you don't. I, I think I don't know why they've not put up the message of last Wednesday. You understand where you keep pressing for you to be fruitful. He said that your joy might be full. Mm. You understand? Okay, let me ask you. If you're praying God for a car, you're in warfare. They don't want me to have a car. They don't want me to have a car. You are warfare. Once you buy a car, will you still pray that prayer? Because you have victory. Wow. I have a It's not opening. Yeah. This one is from Pastor Nena from Nigeria, Port Accord. Is it wrong for a Please, man? Please, I hope Pastor who? Pastor Nena. Pastor Nena. Yes, sir. Ah, is that my cousin? Okay, ask. I hope you can. You have to come. Well, I will be in Portacot Nena. I will be in Portacot. Come. The details are on the screen. Want you to come join us? Yeah. Is it wrong for a man of God to carry out God's instruction, like building a covenant box, placing it on the altar, just like my pastor did? Are we still under the old covenant or new? Please teach me more. What does the covenant box mean? What do you mean by covenant box? Okay, it, it, some churches, nothing is wrong. They just name. Sometimes when you see the name, you begin to look for stories. Most churches have a box for tithes. Mm -hmm. Some have for charity. Mm -hmm. And some have for the pastor. You understand because there are times where a person might just decide to come into the church who can have my tithe i need to give my tithe. whom do i give and there are no people you don't even trust anybody to give you know there are some tithes you don't give to people yes for them to give to the church you bring a hundred thousand you say give to somebody to give before you know they're in zimbabwe or they're in botswana or somewhere gone 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 you understand so we have a tithe box you, you understand? And the tight box is a covenant box. Mm. The tight is a covenant that you enter with God. You put a covenant. So you might have a covenant that you will take care of the less privilege. Mm. Your covenant with God. Then you go to the box. And there's a covenant with the man of God. Where you, the, the person, the, the, where a man, you sow into the life of the man of God. So it's nothing wrong. You have boxes where you might not have an opportunity to see him. But you want to bless him. You don't have his account number. So nothing is wrong with that at all. Nothing is wrong with that. Mm, thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. So let me ask this question. Um, it's, it's sometimes, uh, I, it, it's, uh, I put it down a while, and then destiny help us. I mean, most people, you know, we have this, uh, you know, now they're teaching a lot that people should take value relationship, value people, no matter how it is. But how do, how is, how, how do people, and I, I think you, you've done a series, you've done a teaching on that before, how do you identify uh, They will help you. <laughs> what else? If he's, if he's coming and he's not a destiny helper, he will not help destiny. He will help you. Jesus had destiny helpers. His disciples were destiny helpers. Nicodemus was destiny helper. Uh, 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 Joseph of Aramantia was a destiny helper. He had to fulfill destiny to put him in the grave. And that grave was written that he will be buried among the rich. You understand? destiny helpers are destiny helpers they come they might not give you money destiny helpers don't always give you money destiny helpers give you divine connection they give you divine connection they might not have money but they will link you or they will recommend you they will mention your name the bible is there everywhere you understand? The destiny helper of Joseph was who? Uh, the, the man, is it the man who interpreted the dream? Yeah, the butler. Was his destiny helper? He said, my, I've, I've remembered my fault today. I've remembered my fault. Joseph did, was still there. He said, there's a young man. Finish. Finish. That was his destiny helper. So destiny helpers will recommend you will mention your name you know god's god's greatest method please somebody write it for me i'll put it in my twitter god's god's greatest method 
of helping you and advertising you is through gossip. God's divine method of helping you and advertising you is through gossip. Powerful. Never ever I say it again. Fight people that gossip you. A, you said. A, you said. You said. Never ever fight people that gossip you. They are the greatest destiny helpers. Because nobody... <laughs> The Bible says, and um, his news was spread round about. Finish. I read a book that um, uh, is not Shambak, a great man of God. What's his name now? Uh, I'm trying to, he was into power ministry. This, this great man of God was supposed to go and supposed to I, 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 somebody sent me a message my very good friend Bishop Frank sent me a message today let me read it how to handle insults by Dr. David Oyedepo don't get angry because you are insulted I was insulted by other pastors on national TV for 7 years but I was too busy forging ahead and getting bigger someone asked if we should settle the fight i said there was no fight if one boxer enters the ring and there is no opponent he will go home <laughs> <laughs> he sent me profound word he sent me today what has made dr Ida is gossips and rumors people want to come and see have you heard have you seen have you heard they are criticizing T.B. Joshua. More people are coming. They are criticizing Oyedepo. More people are coming. They are scandalizing Chris Oyekolome. More people are coming. They, more, they say, oh, let us go and see. Let us go and see. You remember in the Bible, there was a gospel about Jesus. They sent four soldiers to go and arrest him. The soldiers got there, they listened. <laughs> they said, no man spoke like this. They didn't yeah. arrest him. No, Don't you know the next service, those soldiers will come? <laughs> the next service yeah. it's important amen so we have this one um <clears throat> Emmanuel, Emmanuel Umbao. good afternoon man of god i have no question but i am so grateful to god for the grace upon your life thank god for the work you are doing may the lord jesus christ bless you amen the family and the ministry thank you i wish i we are in south africa so that I could enjoy the atmosphere. Emmanuel Mbao. From where? From uh, God, so what? Eh? Zambia. From Zambia. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm honored. Thank you for keep watching ATV. Mm. Amen. I have... Oh, um, Nena said um, it's a covenant. The Ark, he, he says, I mean Ark of Covenant. Which one? Which Ark of Covenant? The Ark... In the Bible, oh, I think I have, uh, when he was asking, it didn't cross my mind. You know, uh, it, winners, we, we do, we usually do it. And just have this ark where people come to put prayer requests. Some use it for symbols, just like this is the ark of covenants, different things. So I think maybe that's what referring to. Those yeah, things. it's just a symbol. Not that there's the same ark, the ark of uh, uh, Noah or the ark of, of Noah the ark or the ark of Moses. No, it's an English word. When we hear a word, I told somebody I wanted to start a ministry in Nigeria and I wanted to call it the shrine of God the shrine <laughs> of God the person screamed what shrine shrine <laughs> I said yes the shrine of God they said no nobody will come to the church I see a line <laughs> the shrine of God do you have internet yes I do. please google the meaning of shrine but you know but you see People, the words we speak, the English, when you hear, you hear Ark, once you hear Ark, you think Ark is Noah. 
You think ark is ark of God in the... No, it's an English word. It's a place of refuge. Yeah, we were all... We were all uh, um, I was the word bothered, but we went and we saw synagogue then. Because... Like back then, the but, uh, saw, nobody used to see look at the so, word synagogue means the place of worship. Yeah, I have the meaning of shrine. Now. What does shrine mean? A place regarded as holy because of its associations with the divinity, with divinity, or a sacred person. Now, did this is you see marked by a building of other construction? You see, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> once you hear, you are up with shrine, those dirty <laughs> people that once you hear yeah. shrine, they think. Do you know you have you heard of shrine? They say it's for the devil. Eh? Everybody here has shrine. All my people here, you've had shrine. Mm. But you see, people don't read, people don't study. I said the shrine of God. They say, hey, shrine. I say people will come. Mm. But most of you are only finding out the meaning now. Mm. It's a place of worship, a holy place of worship. You see, so that's the conflict. People don't study, people don't read, people don't. So if the man says an ark, please Google ark. Ark. Yes, it's A R K, right? Yes, ark. You always reference because where we first heard it is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wrong. Isn't it because uh, the enemy has? It's almost like everything. He's English, man. Let no enemy. No, no, sir, I know, but the people, Let us the find people. out the meaning of for everything is enemy, <laughs> enemy, the, the, the devil, people. the devil, the enemy. No, the it's English people. word. Church people have used it for. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what is a? Okay, uh, uh, I have Ark here. Uh, yes, Ark means what? It's this. It says in the Bible. Yes, the one in the Bible. The ship built by Noah to mm -hmm. save. His family and to every other kind. Example, Noah's Ark. Yes. The second given is the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Um, okay, most of the others referring to the Bible. I'm trying to see a English de definition. Just you, you Google. What does the word Ark mean? Yeah. They, mm. You know. It's coming out. Okay. In yes. Uh, most of them different ones. This is Cambridge. Is this saying the same thing in the Bible? It all starts with the Bible. It says a large wooden ship. And it's, I'm looking for one that has just a pure English definition now. Okay, it, it's, just a, it's, it's just a word. It's just a word. And once we research, you know, you know? What about the um, meaning of the ark? Yes, the meaning of the ark. You have it, huh? Yeah? Okay. Let's do this. Wait, once we. What? Once we Google and find out, it's easy. You know? Okay. Ark is derived... Ark is derived from uh, a, the Latin word acca, meaning chest. A chest where things are kept. A chest where things are kept or a chest where things are stored. Ark. So they say Ark of God. The Ark of Noah. The place where Noah put for things to be stored, things to be saved. So it is it is it is important that we understand. So when the pastor puts an ark, okay, a storeroom, a place, a ark of covenant, it's nothing wrong. Really, it's nothing wrong. Okay, yeah. please let's we have about two minutes now to go and break. The, I still have another meaning, sir. Okay, what's the meaning? Sir? Um, the real significance of the Ark of the Covenant was that was what took place involving a lid of the box known as the mercy seat. The term mercy seat comes from a Hebrew word. No, you are going to the Bible. You are going, still going to the Hebrew version. I'm talking of pure English. Pure mm -hmm. English. It's a chest. It's chest a chest okay, so with I'm a bottom. We are the, the store. We have store. things are kept. It's as simple as that. Okay, we'll take one more question before okay. we we go on we, we go on break. Mm, wait, there's a question. Um, thank you, sir, for your for your love and humility. This is from uh, Pastor Chidi from Togo. Uh, please, sir, from the Bible, it is said that the priests are the ones that administer or eats the type. But today, who eats the type? The priest. 
the priesthood has changed in those days we used to be called the priests now there's nowhere in the bible you will find in the new testament the priest you will find the pastor you will find the teacher the evangelist the prophet and the evangelist is also the bishop and uh, no no it's not the bishop the bishop is just a title for the office it is the apostle is the pastor is the teacher is the evangelist and is the prophet these are now the office in the church being run by the priest he says he is the high priest of our salvation which is jesus so the person that eats the type now is the high priest which is christ then the high priest pays his servants and his workers which are the pastors am i making sense very well said. yes that of the tithe comes before the altar the high priest is jesus is not the high priest of our soul is the high priest of our salvation so when you bring the tithe you bring it to christ but the pastors are the custodians they are the one that are servant that is why you are the servant of god what does the servant do he serves he administers he is the one that coordinates the house is a servant that runs the house so the pastor the teacher the prophet basically that start the church are the ones that run the house on behalf of the high priest so you are not allowed to take the tithe anymore the church the high priest takes the tithe then as a staff as a worker you distribute then you are paid a salary if you go and chop the tithe you have chopped debt you are in trouble yeah. but the church cannot pay you if you have a board they will decide what you need to be paid and you will be paid we are going to take a break this is important if you're a pastor you just had me don't take all the tithe and be chopping it you are you will be cursed you are not the high priest the high priest is jesus christ you are the servant of god that's what you are you you distribute on behalf of the high priest. We are going to take a short break, then we're going to come back to the last um, stanza of this uh, of the view. I hope the view is blessing you. Again, we're celebrating four years. We want to hear from you. Write us and send a WhatsApp and congratulate us on what God is doing um, through ATV. Please don't touch that dial. We'll see you just now. ATV bringing God's power to the nation Get the new book written by Dr. Ida Pedersai, The Sent One, titled Divine Encounter with the Supernatural. This book is the roadmap to Dr. Ida's calling to ministry. To order your own copy, please call plus 2779675608. release by Dr. Amy Peterside. Will I ever get married? Are you struggling in the area of relationships and trying to find the right partner? Well, this book will teach you how to get married and stay married. Know the signs of a right partner. This book includes topics like define a relationship, becoming a person of worth, 
How do I know he or she is the one? Internet dating. Where can I find love? To order yourself a copy of this book, please visit our bookshop or call plus two seven seven nine six seven five six zero eight eight. You're welcome back to the view. I think this is the last stanza that we are handling. And again, thank you for the messages that are coming in, all the people that have been writing in and congratulating us and asking questions um, in the studio with me. This is the view. Again, you see the WhatsApp numbers. Please WhatsApp us. Again, like I mentioned, I will be in Port Harcourt. Um, whether you are going to your own church or not, it's just an encounter with the power of God. On the 30th and on the 31st, I will be at the Jesus Evangelical Missions in Ozoba, 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 by NTA Road. It's a massive building. Uh, my good brother and friend, um, Apostle Baningo, Blessing Baningo, has invited us to come and, and, uh, and, and minister there. It's on a Monday, uh, and on a Sunday, Sunday 9 o'clock, I think 8 o'clock or so, 8 o'clock on Sunday and uh, 4.30 in the afternoon on Monday. We hope to see you there. There are numbers on the screen. You can consult and call, and by the grace of God, somebody will give you directions. It's still the view. Please, I hope we have some more questions coming. Can we take those questions? Okay, let me start here. Uh, this one says, I am Pastor Mike from Nigeria. Good morning, my apostle. Mm. Thank you for impacting my life. Please, sir, uh, I know that I have the gift of healing and deliverance. Yeah. Because I always see it manifested in my dream. But, sir, how do I activate it? Thank you, you use it. Use it. Use it. Don't be afraid to use it. Even if you're afraid, use it. Just keep praying for people. And before you know it, you will begin to receive testimonies. People will begin to testify of how God used you. Any gift that is not used will be dormant. Every gift that will die, basically to just die of because the gift was not used. If you have a gift, you have to express it. If you have to sing, you know how to sing, don't sing in the bathroom. Come and sing for your friends. If you feel God has called you to preach, don't go look for the, an altar you will preach because nobody might give you the altar. Go out there, evangelize to people, minister to people, and the gift will begin to grow, and by the grace of God, people will not. Amen. We have another one. Man of God, I had a dream delivering people. It's like when I moved my hand, the person would fall down. What does this mean? You just said you have a gift. It's like you have a gift. Sometimes God is showing you a picture of what he wants to do with you. Uh, for you, it's left for you to accept or to reject, to embrace it or to deny it. If God is showing you signs, I had dreams like this, you know, when I was young, I will go to the hospital. God will take me to the hospital. We have been praying for people. They'll be getting up. Most times it wasn't deliverance, you know. It was healing, you know. And I will prophesy to people. I say, God is asking me to tell you this. So God was just sending a signal that there is a grace and a gift inside of me. Wow. I yeah. know, sir, because I remember... So it means that if you really have you dream you're going into hospitals... You're gonna do. You're gonna be in ministry. Well, where else are sick people? Yeah. You can't be showing me sick sick people in the bank. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes, the, it's a sign because it's telling your head is the hospital, which means there are sick people here. Mm. It says you're just showing you the hospital is not that you you'll be going to the hospital. It just shows that there's a grace to deal with people that are uh, that have infirmities. Oh. Okay, sir. Get it. Um, so I'm having, this one is from Nigeria. Sir, so I'm having challenges, especially in the area of finances, and I want you to speak about my life. Then he says, I appreciate what God is doing in your ministry. Congratulations. There, there is nothing to speak about in your life. Sow seeds, pay your tithes, give offerings. What you sow, you will reap. Never forget. No prayer can help you. We could decree things to come to pass if you've done, fulfilled all righteousness. If you fulfill all righteousness, if you've never started seeing the blessings that comes with what you are doing, keep doing it. When the cloud is full, mm -hmm. it will give water. Wow. Mm. Um, we've got mm. one from within. 
of Johannesburg. Afternoon, sir. My name is Busi. What are the signs of a right partner? God-fearing. He respects you. He honors you. He provides for you. Basically. Uh, he's handsome. You want me to say he's handsome and rich? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I just some uh, ministers of God have been sending me questions, and I'm still building over the things you mentioned about you know, the organization. But I just the scripture came to mind. Jesus Christ said, "Tell the people to sit in companies, in companies and, and in order." In yes. Order. That means they already have those kind of system. Other yes. It's difficult to five thousand men, five thousand and children. You know. So. Uh, now, uh, ministers and church leaders, what, what can you say? Because one of the, I think one of the, the attendance of conference I see pastors struggle with how they can keep focus, focus, because you know people come in Sunday sometimes less people come in during the week, and you know they spend all their weekend all manner of things. So they come in. How, how do uh, what you do preach you to one person? God did not call you because of the crowd. God gave you a word. God gave you a word. So the, the problem with the body of Christ or the pastors, they are after the crowd. The most important thing is the word. So if one person hears the word, that's okay. You're a messenger. When you deliver a letter, you don't deliver a letter to 5,000 people. You deliver a letter to individuals. Mm. Every time I come to preach, I, tell, I even announced, I said, God sent me to one person. Maybe all of you that are 5,000 here, that's what, not what God sent me to on that service. Maybe one person. You go the next week, maybe two people. That's why you don't give up going to church. Because one day, your, rec your register will be open. You, nobody knows. I, I read a scripture that shocked me. It's in the book of uh, Acts of Apostles. The Bible says, and the disciples came by the gate beautiful and met a man that was lame. And I said, this man, the Bible says he sits there every day. My question is, didn't Jesus see him? Jesus went to that temple every day. Didn't Jesus see him? Jesus would have seen him. He would have heard of Jesus. He would have seen Jesus. Two things would have happened. Number one, it was so obvious that he wasn't after healing. Jesus has been everywhere. Coming to that temple, prophets are coming. He was after money. His desire was money. He looked to them to see what they would give to him. So Peter now rebuked him. Silver and gold I don't have. What's your problem? Every person that is passing here, you say, give me silver, give me gold, give me silver. Have you not thought of your healing? Okay. It's a revelation, eh? mm -hmm. Yes. He said, with anger, such as I have, rise and walk. Straight away the man's feet was, was, uh, was straightened. The same way in the church. You understand? So when people come into the house, what are they coming for? What are they coming for? And why do you come this week, you don't go the next week? You come this week, you don't go the next week. The week that heaven is supposed to visit you. The other day that man was uh, preaching, he said, blessed, blessed, I'm hearing a name, blessed, no blessing. Maybe he didn't come that day, yeah. I was there yesterday. I didn't feel like going today. I didn't have transport. Mm. The reason why the man still said it, because the people that will be blessed has been already written in heaven. Mm. Their names are down. Mm. So he needed to fulfill, to call that name. Mm. Because heaven had downloaded in his uh, uh, medulla oblongata. Heaven had downloaded the people that will receive the blessings of God on that day. So, if you are not there, you miss out from the mind the will of God. Okay? Yes, sir. 
Very, very true. And so thank God for the prophetic ministry. As kids, we used to hear that, um, that song, God has um, a blessing or someone, a song like that that yeah. teaches that when you're in church, where you are sitting, the angels are ready to visit you. Visit you. And we just hear those things and we just take uh, It's just one of those things. But the prophetic ministry has shown that this is true. Mm. Yes, mm. it's shown by the man of God says there's a Nigerian on this seat, something. Yeah. Yes. A specific thing that you know that if you are not there at that moment, you, you miss out. You miss out. Do, are we? Yes, sir. I have a question, but. Um, good afternoon, sir. Why is the Church of God running away from intercession to selfish prayers from revivalist Jacob from Zimbabwe? No, the church is not running away. We pray mm -hmm. for a church like because she's not on TV doesn't mean we don't pray. Mm -hmm. You know, most times when you see uh, pastors, churches that are on television, you, you, we have a strong intercessory group. On Saturdays, we come here, Hour of Power. We pray for things. People pray. Keep praying. If God has called you as an intercessor, don't give up. We don't pray selfish uh, prayers. People do, but we still pray other prayers. We can't come to church this week. We pray for the nation. We come to church next week. We pray for the nation. We, we pray for women. We pray for children. Different kinds of prayer that we pray in the church. So then he asked a question. Another one. Um, are the 24 elders in the throne room of God? Did the Bible say so? The Bible says so. The Bible says so. The Bible says, so. yeah, so. yes. Around the, if the Bible says there are 24 thrones, wait, when we get there, we'll see them. <laughs> they cannot be showing me the 22 throne from here, and I went already, he has told me. When we get to heaven, those that are in heaven are seeing the throne. When we get there, <laughs> we will see the throne. Amen. <laughs> Um, then, Mr. The gentleman about courtship and uh, about the girl being pregnant in church, mm -hmm. um, he said, Thank you, sir, for the revelation just explained now from the book of Acts. I agree with you. Wonderful. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. A again, we, we need to pray as like we've run out of time. We need to pray. And those of you with prayer requests, those of you that need a now miracle, we're in our month of fruitfulness. You need fruitfulness in your career, in your life, in your marriage, in your business. I want you to come close to the television and stretch your hands. I want to pray for your ministry. I want to pray for your life. Father, I stretch my hands towards my partner, those partners that are watching us all around the world. Wherever you are watching, wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, God that called me, I pray for you now. Every sickness in your body, every affliction, every pain every disease wherever satan has captured you wherever satan has manipulated your destiny mm. wherever you have walked away from your promise this afternoon i return them back to you and i command the blessings of god over your life in the name of jesus i pray peace over your marriage i pray the blessing over your business and your life be set free from that affliction be set free from that disease be set free from that thing that the enemy is using against you be free be delivered be healed be blessed in jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. 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 thank you for partnering with us again we expect you to partner with us there are numbers on the screen if god has touched you through atv you want to partner with us financially I believe as you watch ATV, you will see uh, details, whether you're in Nigeria, we have an account in Nigeria, we have an account in South Africa. We want you to partner with us. Help us take the message of God's power around the whole world. We're waiting to hear from you. Remember, I will be coming to Nigeria in Port Harcourt on the 30th and on the 31st of July. We're coming with power. We're coming with power. Power, not be powder. We're coming with force. To, to, en to enslave the devil and set captives free. Again, I want to say a big thank you to Melissa. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Melissa, thank you for joining us and uh, we're praying and waiting for the prophecy to come to pass. <laughs> and, for, uh, and for IK, again, thank you so much. Uh, you've been a tremendous blessing to us. May God continue to bless you and use you. Amen. 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 Again, until we hear from you next week, 
this is the view it is the view keep watching and may god continue to bless you and your family and everything that your hand finds to do in jesus name goodbye my name is dr ida peter said a big thank you to the crew camera people those on the on the board for everything that have made this program a success i say may god bless you